Master, would you trust to Solace until your good name has been cleared here in Granville? You need to unmulk for perspectives to do better, you think? Uh, not even necessarily. It's... It's, it's hard to say. Um, because, it's like, in theory, being able to see it play out would be interesting. Maybe having a one-off chapter here or there of doing stuff like that, like a mini-chapter. Um, I definitely think that... I, I like the way that Radiant Dawn at least tries to handle its story, even if it's not uh, perfect. But I will say that there's... I'm not 100% sure that it would work here. Um, it's hard to say exactly what would work, um, because while I do think it's a fair criticism to say that it does rely on tell, don't show, it would be a better criticism to be able to explain a way that would work better. And I think, heck, even if you just had, like, a cutscene of that happening, and yes, for SNES era, that this wouldn't necessarily work. But, I mean, you could just have, you know, a cutaway scene. Because you have some cutaway scenes where they do stuff uh, between uh, capturing various castles. You could have a cutaway scene capturing the second to last castle of but but then they'd have to uh do the whole thing of like they would have to load a different map um stuff like uh gba uh does this sometimes like uh sacred stones like you'll be doing the thing with erica and then you'll have that flashback cutaway up to the tower of volney where uh Kalok and selena are destroying the, you know, marching in, killing the soldiers, and destroying the stone. Uh, you could have something like that, where, you know, what's his name is Byron or whatever is getting arrested or whoever's getting killed. Um, maybe even frame it as like a flashback scene or something. Um, you could set that up in such a way to uh, show what's happening so that way. Not necessarily even changes what the story is or how it's received too much, but it then allows people to see what's happening as opposed to just having to read and having to connect, okay, who are all those names that we just got listed? Because I remember when I first played through, I had no idea who they were talking about uh, because it was a decent amount of time between... You know, me reading the stuff in the prologue in chapter one, and then me reading the stuff at the very end of chapter three, and I had forgotten who some of these characters were, especially since they have never shown up on camera, like on screen. Byron does not show up on screen aside from once in the major lore dump in the prologue, and then he shows up again as a unit that he rushed to with Sigurd in chapter five. And those are the only times he shows up on screen, so it's very easy to forget that he even exists, and that's and that that's what his name is. And so I don't think the story's bad. I think the story has a lot going for it, but because it's only told to us by kind of ranting villains, it ends up feeling worse than it is, because like, when you actually break it down and talk about what's going on, the story of FE4 is, in some ways, for some people, pretty legendary. Just because of all the machinations going on, all the political drama, all the, like, the dark undertones, things going on in the background, stuff like that. But when you're actually playing FE4, you're getting very little of that. And the little bit that you try to get elsewise is told to you either, you know, in these cutscenes after the fact good but unrefined yeah yeah and like there's a reason why there are so many manga adaptations of fe4 specifically not just because the timing worked out i that's a big part of it um of of kind of when the big thrust was for it but definitely because the story has so much potential nuance to tell, uh, potential gaps to, you know, that things that were left up to the imagination that can be filled in, 
uh, so many things where it's like, I'm actually okay with a lot of that dark stuff not being shown on screen directly. Um, sometimes the best way to handle something is to imply it, but not outright state it, and definitely not show it. Um, because heavy subject matter, I think, can exist in media, but it needs to be very carefully dealt with. And if you don't believe that you have... And if you don't have the time to talk about it and the means to cover it adequately and properly, then moving on from it is definitely important. Uh, no, I said that wrong. Um, moving on, like, maybe, like, mention it and move on. Don't drag it out. Don't try to write something that you're not confident you can uh, deal with effectively, especially when it's sensitive subject matter. And so I think by them mentioning stuff is happening, mentioning that it's terrible and moving on, like hinting at it, mentioning it's terrible and moving on, is a lot, is a lot safer of a move. And I think fits the story better because it allows the pace to not get drawn out uh, on that plot thread. However, if it wanted to capitalize on that plot thread, then that should be the main thrust of it. <laughs> uh, in related, uh, somewhat related to this conversation, I recently watched, uh, for the very first time, Neon Genesis Evangelion. That show is... Psychological body horror masquerading as a mecha anime. <laughs> it is intense. It is dark. It is heavy. Is it handled in the best way? Maybe not. I don't know. It's confusing and complicated and weird. But it takes the time to at least attempt to go into those psychological details to the point where it is more about the psychology of its characters than it is about, you know, giant, you know, robot alien fights. For pound for pound minutes on the screen, it is like significantly more about the psychology of, of the characters. And that's good, because that's the story it wanted to tell. And so by giving it that level of screen time, that amount of screen time, it goes more towards that direction and treats it appropriately. Or at least as appropriate it gives it the it gives it the care and attention it deserves whether or not you argue if it's treated appropriately or not um and that's what i think where it's like okay there's a lot of stuff there is a heck of a lot of stuff you could get into with arvis and with julius and with all that drama there and with deirdre and all of that you could get into all of that if you watch Fargast's video, uh, fairly recent, like, second or third most recent video, where he goes into all of this very, very well, um, breaking down what we're given in the games, what we're given in the official items, what we're given in the various manga adaptations, what's canon, what's not, putting together this whole story. There is a lot of meat to those bones. But not all of that is in-game. Nor should it be, because otherwise you're making that is so much plot, there is no feasible way to cover that much plot in-game in a way that still maintains even a semblance of flow. Like, FE4 already has problems with just dumping a lot of dialogue on you and moving on. Heck. 
Bopper's latest video uh, d says it really well. If he like Fire Emblem, newer Fire Emblem supports are multiple times the length of Shakespeare works, and those are just supports, not even including like the whole game text. And so it is very intense, and there's a lot of stuff to cover, and you need to know when to cut. Honestly, one of my biggest worries of a potential FE4 remake is that they take way too much time to go in detail to show these stories, but kill the pacing even further by not doing it properly, or by trying to bloat fill it everywhere because I mean call it what it is FE4 is FE4 is definitely a very bloated game <laughs> even for what it is and adding on a whole extra two or three plots worth of story arc for characters that we never even see on screen for more than like maybe, you know, five minutes in the original would not be a good decision for this game. If anything, it needs to cut back and tell the story better instead of just adding more details to it. But that's my rant on FE4's story and its direction. Maybe I'll cut that out and make it like a video highlight or something. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much.